Okay, last question and oh, second last question really actually for this, but there's a last question I'm calculating using colour images and it's probably the most involved one and it's probably the most likely type of question that you're going to get on an exam or something similar to that because it's going to make you calculate a coefficient, sorry, um, not a coefficient, a, um, what are they called? Calibration constant or calibration factor for a certain calorimeter. Here it is anyway. In an experiment to determine the energy content of naphthalene, which is C10H8, a bomb calorimeter was used. And you know what they are because um, you've listened to the podcast and you've seen diagrams. Initially, a constant current of 0.8, sorry, 1.8 amps was passed through an electric heater for 75 seconds. The potential difference was 4.95 voltage volts. Sorry, The temperature increased from this to this. Okay, this information will give you your calibration factor. And then a sample of naphthalene was then burned in a calorimeter, and the temperature increased from this to this. Okay, and this will give you your delta H. We want to find out the heat of combustion of naphthalene. All right, not too hard, but um, it will take a bit of, bit of doing anyway. Um, so let's get stuck straight into it anyway. Start off with calibration factor. First of all, we need to know how much energy we put into it. Our, our energy calculation is equal to volts times amps times time in seconds. So our volts here are 4.95. Our amps here is 1.8. And our seconds is 75 seconds. It's not, not very long, actually, at all, really. So that's why we don't get much of a increase in temperature here. But let's have a look at it. So 4.95 times 1.8 times 75 gives us 668.25 joules of energy was used. Okay, so that's how much energy was put into our calorimeter. Our calibration factor is our energy divided by our temp change, our uh, delta temp. Our energy was 66, sorry, 668.25. Our temperature change is the difference between these two. So um, 18.32 take away 18.25 equals a massive difference of 18.32 take 18.25, 0 0.07, okay? So that is 0.07. So we have a large number basically here, 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.07. That gives me 9,546.4 joules per degree centigrade. Okay. I might just convert this into kilojoules because it will make it easy for me and put 9.5. Um, five kilojoules per degree centigrade. Okay, doesn't matter with the rounding here because I'm going to still keep on all these decimal points from my calculator later on. That's my calibration factor. Find the energy divided by how many temp what the temperature is, so I get the amount of energy per degree centigrade, and that's what my calibration factor is. Next, I want to know how much energy was released from this. So in my experiment, I have energy equals calibration factor multiplied by my temperature change, delta temperature. Now my delta temperature here in my actual experiment went from 18.32 to um, 23.74, which is a lot more than this one, so we'll have a look at it. So our temperature change, so delta T is 23.74 take away 18.32 equals, uh, I'll make this go into memory, how do I do that? Where is my memory button? Memory plus, all right. So 23.74 take away 18.32 equals syntax error, why? 23.74 take away 18.32 equals 
2 degrees centigrade. So therefore, my energy equals my calibration factor, which is 9.55 give or take times 5.42 equals. So I multiply that by my memory recall. It's not recall. Uh, where's my memory recall? Um, no idea where that button is. Alpha memory equals... 51. Right. That's not right. Alright. Let's just do this. 9.55 times 5.42 equals. No, sorry, it is 51.76 kilojoules. That's my total energy change here. Okay, I want to know my delta H, which equals energy per mole. So therefore I need to know how many moles I have. So my number of moles, I'll put it down here, of naphthalene, C10H8, equals my mass, divided by my molar mass, which equals what my mass was. Up here it's 1.19, divided by my molar mass, which is... 120 plus 8 equals 128. So therefore, 1.19 divided by 128 equals 9.297 times 10 to the negative 3 mole. So therefore, my delta H over here is my energy, which is 51.76 kilojoules divided by my number of mole, which is 9.297 times 10 to the negative 3. So therefore, in my calculator, obviously I'm going to be using my extended amount and you use your um, memory in your calculator for this. 51.79 divided by memory. So my answer equals what it is, which is 5,567.46 kilojoules per mole. And that is my heat of combustion of naphthalene. Not finished yet because we haven't put a sign to this. Combustion means, and you can see the temperature increased, so therefore my heat of combustion, my delta H, is going to be equal to, put this in a box so I don't know it's my answer, negative 5,567 kilojoules per mole. And there you have your final answer. All right, let's move this up so you can see what's going on. All right, and you can have a look at all this. We have our energy using our volts, amps, and temperature. You have your calibration factor using your energy and your temperature change. Sorry, volts, amps, and time. Calibration, energy divided by temperature change. Your energy in your actual experiment is your calibration factor times your energy change in your experiment. You have your delta H as being energy divided by mole. So you might need to find your mole sometimes of it using your mass over molar mass or if you have... Um, a solution, you'll be using N equals CV. And then you have your delta H as whatever your calculation is here. That is how you do um, these types of calorimeter experiments, these types of calorimeter calculations, and that's the basic steps to follow. Notice I'm writing out what I'm finding out each time. I'm writing out calibration factor here very clearly. I'm writing out energy here very clearly. I might even do this energy in experiment, energy in calibration. I might even put those bits in there as well just to help me um, remember what I'm actually finding out here. And I start off with delta H is energy per mole, just so it helps me understand what it is all about. And that is this question done. The next question I'm going to do is about um, adding together the um, different types of thermochemical equations. So I'll do that on now and I might I will do that as a separate video actually so um, I'll keep this one as being calorimeter 
um, questions, and the other one will be a thermochemical equation. Question.